The United Nations is hosting the Summit of the Future in New York. World leaders are gathering here in order to realign their strategies for a sustainable future. India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi will also be addressing this gathering. I have with me Ambassador P. Harish, uh, India's permanent representative at the United Nations to talk about it. So welcome to DD India. Uh, first, if you could take us through the significance of the Summit of the Future and what is high on agenda. Let me begin by quoting the Secretary General who said, we cannot leave a multilateral system represented in the United Nations for our grandchildren, a system that was designed by our grandfathers. So this is the starting point that has led to this summit. After two years of the pandemic and two years of crisis and wars, there is a sense of despondency that the multilateral system and the development goals that we have set for ourselves are not functioning. We don't have a system that is fit for purpose. With this in view, the focus has been what can we do to reboot the multilateral system to make it fit for purpose to deliver development to the world's majority. I think with this in mind, the summit of the future process had begun. Uh, and India actively participated along with all other nations in this process. What can we do to achieve sustainable development goals, have an SDG stimulus so that we can try to reach our Agenda 2030 objectives? What is it we can do more to contribute to achieving our goals on climate change? What is it that we could do in the digital arena to leapfrog development and give a leg up to countries in the global south so that they can cover the distance that they could not all these years. What more we can do to transforming global governance to ensuring that the institutions are fit for purpose for this new era. And most importantly, it is about the youth of the world. This is about the future. It is their future. What is it that we can do to make youth the centerpiece of our development focus and of our strategy. Right. Uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi is going to be addressing uh, the summit as well. There is a lot of anticipation on learning about India's vision for a sustainable tomorrow and the manner in which the priorities of the global south are likely to take center stage. I think we eagerly look forward to Honorable Prime Minister's visit uh, and his message. India is an essential nation in the global system. It is a vital ingredient, the secret sauce for a harmonious world because of our approach. Vasudaiva Kutumbakam, the whole world is our family. It is with this philosophy that we approach. When India is able to provide all the necessities for its people, when India is able to harness science and technology, digital platforms and digital public goods for 1.4 billion people, when India is able to ensure food security energy security and develop new paradigms of development and be a model and make these available to our friends and partners in the global south. I think that makes a huge impact and that is the uh, true importance of India. And when Prime Minister comes, I think his message would be the example that he has set mm -hmm. India on this development process, how we have been able to ensure in the last few years the growth of digital platforms and uh, digital public goods, the, the huge impetus given to ensuring basic necessities are made available to the vast majority of our citizens, and the way in which we have harnessed technology, not just in space and uh, going to the far side of the moon, but in ensuring that we are able to leverage that for making a difference in the day-to-day -day lives of our citizens. I think that is what the Global South and our friends and partners in the uh, uh, developing world look to us for. And Honorable Prime Minister's uh, address in this regard will be a great inspiration. Right, sir. You talk about the centrality of India in global geopolitics today. In that sense, we are at the United Nations. Uh, what kind of a place, what kind of force does India represent in this institution? As I said again, India is a vital nation. India is a bridge between the North and the South between the developing and the developed, between small countries and global powers. 
We do this because, as I said, our philosophy is that the whole world is one family. When we develop and leverage technology, we don't patent it. We put it in open source code, make it available on the internet for any country to be able to leverage. Vaccine Maitri is a shiny example of India's outstretched hand of help and cooperation to all our friends and partners. I think when we engage on climate change, we engage with a great deal of responsibility, knowing that we didn't cause the problem, but in the full knowledge that we are an important part of the solution. So we remain committed to our Glasgow commitments made by Honorable Prime Minister to achieving 500 gigawatts of renewable energy. Uh, I think in a range of areas, when we talk of the threats to peace and security, look at Indian peacekeepers. Over 275,000 peacekeepers have taken part around the world in different missions, safeguarding uh, uh, peace and ensuring safety where they worked. Uh, many of them laid down their lives in the cause of uh, peace and security. I think India is a net contributor to global public good. We have made vital contributions to uh, 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 global uh, public goods and services uh, through the International Solar Alliance, to the, uh, uh, through the CDRI in uh, ensuring we develop disaster resilient infrastructure, uh, recently through the Global uh, Biofuel Alliance. Uh, Prime Minister's clarion call for life um, is uh, our significant contribution to environment. I think uh, keeping in view all of this, the Global South and all developing countries look to us for inspiration, for leadership, and for holding hand as we move forward and take our citizens on the path of development and prosperity. Right, so and the points that you mentioned precisely make the case uh, for India stronger as far as reform of uh, the United Nations, UNSC, multilateral global institutions are concerned. It's a long uh, pending demand. What kind of breakthroughs can we expect in this edition of the visit? I think um, the uh, summit of the future, in this all countries are very clear that the Security Council needs reform. We need a reformed Security Council and an expansion in both the permanent and the non-permanent category. India, along with other countries, seeks uh, clearly a time-bound, text-based negotiations to achieve this. We, as one-fifth of humanity, and as a vital nation that has contributed significantly to global public goods and that has played an important role in the international system, have a legitimate claim to a permanent seat in the Security Council. I think in the final analysis, all countries have a clear realization that such reform is required to ensure the credibility of the United Nations and to ensure that it is fit for purpose to meet the challenges of this era. Ambassador, thank you very much for speaking to DD India and sharing your thoughts. That was Ambassador P. Harish uh, speaking about uh, the summit of the future and also India's uh, growing role and importance in the global geopolitics and at the United Nations with camera person Sanjay Jaina, Shubhendu Ghosh for DD India in New York.